Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. Finally, we've seen an update to Google Groups. And so in today's video, we're going to jump onto the platform and I'm going to show you exactly what you can use it for. Let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, first things first, let's open up our browser and let's navigate to Google Groups. Now, the way you do that is you can either click on those nine dots in the top right corner or you can type in groups.google.com. So let's go ahead and open up the browser and we're going to navigate to Google Groups. Now the first thing you'll see is that the interface is very, very different. It has finally been updated and it now looks new, fresh and easier to use. Now I often get the question, what is Google Groups and what can I use it for? Well, Google Groups is really a place to have forums and email based groups and where you can exchange information and files with each other. It's a great place for your PLN or PLC where you have your professional learning network and where you're meeting together with colleagues and exchanging ideas. Many of the GEG Google Educator groups are also utilizing groups to share ideas between their members. Now, when you first open up the platform, you'll notice there's a big button in the top left corner and that's going to allow you to create a new group. So let's go ahead and do that first. We're going to create a group and I'm going to call this my demo eduflip group. And as you can see here, it automatically generates an email address as well. This is to have that functionality of a forum where people can then email to this address and it automatically becomes a threat or a discussion on that forum. We can give it a description. So I'm going to say demo group. And then we're going to click on next. Now this is the important part of setting up your groups. This is where you change your privacy settings. Now you can see here, it's very clear what you should do and who can search for the group. Now, prior to the update, it was very complicated and complex to set it all up. This has made it much easier. So who can search for the group? Well, you can either have it public on the internet. That means anyone can find your group and anyone can search for your group. Great when you're trying to discuss different topics with large groups of teachers around the world. Well, then you can have it anyone on the web. We can also keep it within our organization. So you have a work group and maybe you're exchanging information about Key Stage 1 or Key Stage 2 or maybe computing at a primary level. You can have it within your organization and then teachers can find it and join that group. I'm going to keep it within the organization. So who can join my group? Well, again, you have a number of different options. We can only invite users and then we are in full control over who joins our group. We can have people within our organization ask to join and then they have to be approved or we can have it so that they are automatically approved to join. We can also have anyone can ask and anyone can join. These are for the public facing groups where anyone can ask to join the group and then you as an admin have to approve it or anyone can join and there is no pre-approval. I'm going to keep it to anyone can ask to join. Now we're going to scroll down and it gives you a nice little overview here of what different members can do and how the permissions work. Now I really like how you can change this visually and you can change who does what, who can view the different conversations. And these are the different discussions taking place within the forum. And then here it says entire organization. This can be changed so you can have only your group members can view conversations. Who can post new conversations? Well, maybe group members. And then who can view the members? Well, maybe only the managers can view those members. We don't want others to see who is also a member. Now this can again be changed to whatever you choose it to be. Once you're ready to move on, simply click on next. And then here we can start adding email addresses. So we can start adding some members. We can start adding managers to the group and they will all have different roles. If you saw from that previous screen, the manager has more control over things than a member does and then the owner is the admin has full control over the group you don't have to do that right now but you can start adding your members here you can send them a welcome message and then how do they subscribe to your forum or to your group well they can either get every single email which I don't recommend or it can be a digest abridged or none I'm going to keep it at none directly add members let's create that group now and here we go we now have our group it clearly says that there's only one member at the moment email address and then we can go to that group 
So let's go ahead and go to the group. Here we go, we are inside our group and this is going to function the same way a web forum will function. So you can see on the left hand side there's a number of conversations. We have approved conversations, pending conversations and then we have our people's tab where we can look at pending members, banned users and also add members. Let's stick to the conversations and let's just start a new conversation. So we're going to start a new conversation, we're going to give it a subject, so we're going to say this is a first conversation. Now what you will see is that it's being sent from me and it's going to be sent to that group. So it's using that same principle of having an email address that you can send conversations to. Demo conversation one. We're going to post that message and it will appear right here in the main page. You can see who started this conversation and then you can see the actual conversation here. Now, as people click on that, they will go into the conversation and they can either reply to all, reply to the author or forward the conversation. This looks very similar to email and therefore it makes it really easy for people to understand how to interact with these conversations. We can go back to the main conversation here and then as we add multiple topics to our group in the top right we can add new conversations. Now you can have multiple groups and maybe you're a manager in some of them, just a member in others and as you navigate between these groups this interface will allow you to really interact with all conversations. Now one more thing that's important to note is that you can always tweak those membership settings. Now because I'm the admin and a manager of this group I can also go into the group settings and then here I can change the settings. So you can see as I scroll down I can go back and I change who can see this group, who can join the group and then also what these permissions are. So if you made a mistake as you were setting up the group well no problem you can jump into the group settings and then just change everything right there. Now as we scroll down you can see there's also some posting policies. Again there's different permissions for different types of members of your group. Here we can also have the message moderation turned on. At the moment there is no moderation but we can choose to moderate all messages. And all these settings will allow you to really utilize Google Groups as a professional learning network. Now how do I find groups and how do I join groups? Well for that we have to go back to that first page and we're going to go to the My Groups page. Now here at the top you'll see that you can now start searching for groups. So here before you type in your search query you can choose am I going to look for groups that I own or manage, groups within my organization or outside of my organization. In addition to that you have to switch this one here to either just your groups or all groups. So let's say that you're looking for groups to join that are outside of your organization, you are not a member yet, well we can go to all groups and then here we can type in computing as a subject that I'm looking for and I'm going to switch it to outside my organization. Now instantly you'll get a number of different groups and conversations that are all public. Now they also have that little tag there that says it's an external group and so we can find out more about that group. So here we have blind computing, business computing, any groups available. Let's say that I'm looking for some GEG groups, well I'm going to type in GEG as a search term which stands for Google Educator Group and then here we can see that GEG Ireland is discussing some things, there's a GEG Kenya and there are over 400 different groups. When you click on this you can find out more about that group and then join those groups that have interesting topics or things that you enjoy discussing. Now let me know in the comment section below if you are a member or manager of a group. I'd love to find out more about that group, what the group does and what it stands for. And then also what do you think of this new interface of Google Groups? Let me know in the comment section below. Now you can choose one of these videos to watch next and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.